What do you want? You're dead, do you hear me? When I'm done with you, they'll be sponging you off the floor. Yeah, you'll be in the poorhouse making soup out of your dirty socks. Fuck you. Me? Is that... Is that what you're saying? Fuck me? The suit! You know what's good? Pay the damn money and pray that I'm satisfied. Hello? God damn it. My mom. <laughs> Mr. Stussy! Chief Burgo, we met yesterday. Uh, you know Officer Lopez. What's, uh... We just had a few more questions. Wow. You want to come inside, or...? Oh, better you come to the station with us. Cleaner. Shit. It's a family matter, is my philosophy. Whatever past disagreements, bygones. Just not gonna work. Think of Jesus. His <laughs> actions. So, there's bad blood between you and Mr. Phelps? No, I wouldn't say... What about between you and the... Oh, what's the brother's name? Emmett. Right, Emmett. Emmett Stussy, who lives in Eden Prairie. Did I, has he been making accusations? Because I got, literally, my conscience is clear. Your conscience? Right. Maybe if you tell us how your car came to be damaged. Like I said, it was an accident. He backed into your Corvette two times, Mr. Phelps. There's jealousy there. How close we are, me and Emmett, our bond. So you... You're saying there's no beef with Emmett? No bad blood? No. Emmett, we're... He's the best man at his wedding. And his daughter's wedding. They, they, they had it in, uh, in Mexico. The invitation said, no shoes. Can you imagine a wedding with no shoes? <laughs> Tell me more about your man, Maurice Le Fay. Oh, he's not my... Just a number in a file, uh, one of the faceless masses. When's the last time you... S oh. No. Sheriff, before you... I talked you... to Donnie, let it go. He told me what you're up to. We're not up to anything. There's a suspect in the box. A suspect of what? Wendy Lopez, St. Cloud Metro. <clears throat> we got a conflagration of names here. Your victim, Anastasi in Eden Valley, was murdered by the prole of Ray Stessy, currently in the box whose brother Emmett Stessy lives in Eden Prairie. And? And there's bad blood between the brothers. A run-in, one vehicle against another, so we're thinking things escalated. Ray hires the ex Listen to me. What the fuck? Back off, mister. Well, wonderful story. Okay, here's another story. Once upon a time, a guy named Stussy hired an idiot to rob his brother, and the idiot drove to the wrong town and killed the wrong Stussy. I hate that story. You know why? You can't prove it. Let her try! Now, pack him up and get him out of here. We got work to do. You're a prick. That guy should not be running a bath at a little police department. And yes, I do hate him more than Bill. And I really didn't like Bill. I tell you why I dislike him more than Bill. Pauls. I dislike him more than Bill because Bill was stupid. And I actually don't think that guy is stupid. I think he is such a sexist pig that he cannot even hear the women talking properly. He's just... I really, really don't like him. I'm not even remembering his name. That's how little respect I have for that character. I'm not even going to learn his name. I'm just call him Chief. <laughs> oh, Gotta say, though, fair play to Gloria standing up to him there. Like, she held her, um, like, her physical space when he was trying to dominate her. Oh, fuck, no! What? I'm not sure we can trust the Jew. Oh, I've really had it with him. Say, some people think he's colluding 
with your brother. What? Who? People talk. That's all I'm saying. People you don't want to be talking. I heard he broke into your bank. Sigh. Raymond. And he's using your brother as a diversion, or worse, a straw man, after all. The name on the marquee is Stussy Lots. But nowhere does it specify which Stussy. That's, he, he's... Come on, Emmett. He's on board, all in with this, with us. We are making a souffle here, do you understand? Lines of credit, capital, acquisition, increased valuation. It's how you turn a small business into a big business. And it is fluffy. And it is delicious. But you can't agitate while it rises, otherwise, poof. He just wants to protect me from success. I'll talk to him. And that's all I ask. This is fucked up. Emmett, don't be a dickhead. There's a man waiting to see you. Oh. What now? Mr. Stussy. I'm Agent Dollard from the IRS. Thanks. Uh, what? Spot? Just maybe we could go to your office? The IRS do just drop in. You made a withdrawal in the amount of $10,000 cash earlier this week. Excuse me? What? No, we didn't. You said... Since when was it a crime for a citizen, a tax-paying citizen, to use their own money? <laughs> no, sir, it's not a crime. <laughs> not exactly. But uh, any transaction, deposit, or withdrawal greater than $9,999.99 triggers an alarm with us. So I've been dispatched by HQ to ask a few questions, or simple questions. Maybe take a look at your books. My books? You think of it like... Okay. You've been to the airport? Pauls, wait. He took £10,000 of his own money out of his own bank account, and now the IRS is all up in his ass? What? Like a million? A hundred thousand? What's he gonna do with ten grand in this world? Come on. Is that, is that for real? Oh, yes! I would be so pissed in this situation that I might have be going out a window. Play. Don't you need a warrant for this? Oh, no, sir. Yeah. That's the FBI. Uh, this is more of an informal kick the tires and all that so that we can avert an actual audit. An audit? Are you crazy? I'm sorry. Sure. And that other gentleman in the next office, that would be Mr. Uh, Feltz? Might be. Sir? Well, I would need to talk to him as well and any other uh, senior members of your staff. How many partners do you have? I'll park myself in an office, you know, do a few interviews, maybe look over your books. Okay. Not a problem. Uh, I know just where to put you. Oh, good. <laughs> this is bad. Oh! He's so disgusting. Everything he does is disgusting. Well, I am. What's he gonna do? Was he wearing a ring? Did he mention kids? They can be used. That's, I have no idea what you're saying to me right now. We can't. He asked to see the books. Yes. That's all right. We'll show him the fake ones. That's... Wait. We have fake books? Oh, my God. 
Shit is getting real now, Emmett. Really feel like the rubber is meeting the road now in this. Oh god, and now we've got this. Let's go deeper. Away from the road. Nikki, I hate you've got a gun on you. Forty grand. That plus the ten you stole puts it fifty. Two hundred. And we want the stamp. For what? It's the principal. What's this? Nothing. Something else. It's okay. I got it. Sigh, sigh. No, no, no. What's the matter, buddy? Tichashika. What? You said pretty girls should only open their mouths when they see a dick. Wow. And just so I'm clear, which one of you is the dick? <laughs> Enough. I'm I'm hanged with this. Have you been to Siberia? It's very much like this. Fuck. Except the dirt. Dirt soaking in blood. Frozen red. Twenty million Russians died fighting Hitler. Twenty million. I see from your face that you can't even imagine that. The pogroms, the starvation. Twenty million more. Mothers cooking and eating their babies. That's why the snow falls white. To hide the blood. Shit. Run, Nikki. I'm leaving. No! No! Oh! 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 no! You, you don't have to. This is what comes after the cup. No! <laughs> Did they just beat her to death? She dead? Please be alive. Please. To a fucking pulp, though, isn't it? Bad news, Ray. It's a oh, rage where they keep all the dark babies. Oh, God, Nicky, fucking hell. Hey? Hey, Tomorrow, you will pay tomorrow. 
Okay, first things first, I should say I have a slight bit of trouble because I pulled my neck at the gym this morning and throughout the course of that, my neck is getting more and more restricted in its movement. So if I'm looking a little bit weird, it's because I can't move my neck properly. That was a brutal episode. It did not stop. Every time I thought, there can't be another thing kicking off. So I think Ray and Nikki did go too far. I think their move with the, I mean, this thing was too far several episodes ago, but I think they really shut the bed with that. You know, with taking the 10 grand without appreciating the impact of it. The theme of what they've been doing is that they're, they're getting justice for wrongs that have been perpetrated in the past, but were not righted. And that I can get behind. I can understand that even though it's delayed justice, it's still justice for something that actually happened. Ray did start a relationship with a parolee and he didn't tell anyone. I'm sure there is a way that you can manage that, but he didn't. Emmett did manipulate his brother into giving him the stamp so that he would have the money. So I have no issue with them going at each other on those, on that basis. This is a whole other thing to create a false sex tape and bust up Emmett's whole relationship, his relationship with his kids, his relationship with his mum. No, that's way, that is so way too far. It's so far over the line, the line is a dot to Ray and Nikki. And obviously they don't know the context in which they're playing either. They think this is against Emmett. They have no idea about VM Varga, his henchmen, the money laundering. None of that. Meanwhile, Varga is working on getting between Emmett and Sai. And he's doing a pretty good job. I think he's put the fear of God into Sai by rubbing his dick. Oh, I can't even talk about it. I'm just going to have to call it the dick mug. We all know what happened. I I'm, I'm keep using that phrase because it means I don't have to describe the actions that I saw, which are going to be emblazoned in my mind but you can't unsee that that was dis really disgusting and it was actually terrifying because you're like what is he going to do next it reminded me actually of the scene in, where in season one where Lord Malvo takes the shit in front of um Stavros's henchman I can remember that thinking oh my god like this guy is just fucking that is so aggressive and it's so fucked up, you would, as a, the person it was happening to, not know how to respond because it's outside of all of the normal parameters of relationship. Someone says, you're a fucking prick. You know, if someone starts shouting at you, there's a, there's a way of responding to that that everyone understands. You either capitulate or you meet, you know, you meet up. You try and talk them down or you, you talk up into a fight. That stuff kind of makes sense. That's ordinary world stuff. So even if someone's being aggressive and they're fronting up like this, you're like, well, it's either going to be a fight or somehow we're going to talk our way out of it. But it's a it's a typical human response to a conflict. Someone taking your world's best dad mug, rubbing their dick around the rim and then holding you at gunpoint while you drink from it. No one's got any frame of reference for that. How do you how do you react? And I I thought the way that I responded was was you're just completely frozen, just compliant enough to follow the orders, but really. Pff. So that scene for me was probably the the joint most awful scene, and you you know what the other one is. But we've got kind of Gloria and Winnie. I could have done with more of them, to be honest. It was, they stayed, I don't feel like we're seeing much of Carrie Coon at all. I know it was the one episode. But even in that, it was like it wasn't really about her. I didn't feel like we particularly got to know her better. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they're just not going to develop her character very much in this season, which would be a crying shame given the quality of the acting chops on Carrie Coon. But so far, you know, we're halfway through. I don't think I know Gloria Burgle any more now than I did when the season started. I probably know more about Willie Lopez. But by the by, 
they're on to Ray. They could, I think, have closed him down in that session, but Chief Dick Swinger comes along and is like, no. So Ray's out on the wind again, and meanwhile, Gloria's off. Gloria's mission is to get this hundred grand out of Psy so that they can go off and do their poker stuff, I guess. But I I actually think she might have got the 200 grand from Sai. I don't know what he means by take the shackles off, but I think I think he sounds really fierce when he says it because for him the things that he's thinking about doing are really awful, but they're not really awful. I don't think at this point in terms of what I would think was really awful in the context of a TV show. So, you know, I think maybe he wanted to somehow try and pressure her into taking the 50 grand, but we'll, well, the 40 grand, we'll never know now. Because fucking Yuri Gurkha turns up with that little guy. I honestly thought she was dead. I thought that was the end of Nikki. I was like crying, basically. Really, that was horrible. It, it reminded me... This is going to be a spoiler for Game of Thrones Season 5, Episode 6, and Bowed and Bent and Broken. I'm telling you it's a spoiler. Go forward a minute or two now. I'll put down where to go um, because this is going to spoil you. So if you're still listening now, I didn't spoil you. You spoiled yourself. There's a scene in that episode. The episode closes with um, Ramsay raping Sansa, but, in, but we don't witness any of the rape apart from her going down on the bending forward on bed but we hear it and we see Theon's face how he's wrapped into it yeah Theon's in the room but the, I have not felt as sick in my stomach since that scene as I just did no that's a lie there are a few scenes don't, there's a lot in the handmaid's tale but if we take the handmaid's tale out of it which is almost constant rape and degradation it really reminded me of that scene from Game of Thrones in that we weren't we weren't seeing Nikki get beaten up, but we could hear her being hit, we could hear her reaction to being hit, and we could see on Sai's face like just how awful what was happening was to her. And I, I it really it that's where my mind went at that point. <sighs> but what an episode. I don't I can't did I enjoy it? I think that was better than I enjoyed it. Like, it was so good I'm left quite disturbed. And I have to watch the next episode to find out what happened. So it was a great episode. I did not enjoy it. Oh my god, that hurt a lot. But fucking well done. That was another, that was another really good episode. It's funny, this season is working in such a different way. I'm, it's quite interesting. You guys tell me, how, tell me in the comments. I really want to hear it. How did you feel at the end of this episode? Did you think, like, ha, like Nick, did Nikki get her comeuppance? Is there anyone out there who feels Nikki got her comeuppance? Um, do you think that what they did to Emmett with, at the beginning with the sex tape, right or wrong? justifiable unjustifiable like where was your mind at, at this point if you can if you can remember what you were thinking i'd really love to hear that i'm now terrified is where i am i've realized this is gonna probably get darker than i had imagined it was gonna get so i'm now bracing myself but also hats off because that episode I feel like I've watched a film. That's about the best compliment I can ever give an episode of television is I feel like I've been through a movie from beginning to end. But we've still got, what, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we've still got a good few episodes to get through. That was awesome. Until the next time. Bye-bye.